It's Johnny Jones. I'm here at home, and today I'm finally going to answer the question, what the hell is in a 6-volt lantern battery? Now, if this seems like a weird question to you, it's probably because you don't know that YouTube is filled with prank and parody videos about this battery. They claim it's filled with brand new, fresh, ink screen AA batteries, AAA batteries, or maybe even gallons of unicorn piss. The point is, people now, they don't really know or trust any video they watch. Is this thing full of batteries? Is it full of pixie dust? Is it full of the universe? Well, I guess we'll just have to find out. Let's go. So chances are, if you search for this video, you're not a subscriber of mine, and you don't care about my life story. So I'll make this quick. I got this battery at a local flea market for $2. You can get them at Dollar General or Dollar Tree for a little bit more. I took off the plastic wrapper and the paper housing, and got a flathead screwdriver, and I just pried the top off, which is really easy. Not that easy, of course. I've broken a few tabs here. And inside, you ready for the big reveal? Batteries! Four batteries in series, 1.5 volts each. That's it. Why don't they have ink screening on them? Ink screening, of course, is the uh, name and product information. Most likely, I would take a guess that the company is not going to go through the process of ink screening these when they're never going to see the light of day. So let's get these out. We have a nice little project box here, which we can fill with batteries to make parody videos and prank people. Or, realistically, we can fill this full of batteries and get any voltage we would like to a degree out of this. 12 volts, obviously easy. You may be wondering why is there a wire soldered to the outer casing of the battery? And that's because the entire case of the battery is negative and is only separated by a non-conductive material from the positive end. That is the same for these AA batteries. The side of them are actually just as negative as the end. And you can solder a wire here, yes, and solder a wire here and get the same results as if you put them on the ends. A word of warning, if you're gonna go opening one of these batteries, you might wanna know the risks, okay? Now this is an alkaline battery. If I burst it, I can spray some vinegar on my hands to neutralize the base. But if you go messing around with lithium batteries, you remember the exploding Tesla? That's lithium batteries, okay? The melted side of your face when the cell phone malfunctions, you've heard of that? Yeah, that's lithium batteries. Highly explosive and volatile. So, be careful when opening up batteries. Like I said, this one is fairly safe. You don't want to mess around with lithium batteries. Anyways, let's see what we can do with this for my subscribers. Because my subscribers like seeing more than that. Yes. Okay, subscriber time. I picked up a high voltage module on eBay for three bucks. We're gonna pop this bad boy in there and we can light a cigarette with it, shock someone with it. It's high voltage, by the way. There's something like 5,000 volts or more. They're rated higher than that, but five is 10,000 volts, whatever. We're gonna rip two batteries out of here, slide this in one of those compartments. And I think I'll use this for a spark gap transmitter. You can also use it for a jammer. I'd like to just make a simple spark gap transmitter because that sounds pretty fun. Yeah, let's do it. God, it's so frickin' cold. Solder doesn't want to frickin' melt. Looks like this thing's going to be resonant at about 1.5 megahertz. We'll see if that even matters. I think it's going to be a lot of noise on a lot of different frequencies. But I put this on a glue stick, heated up the sides of it, mash it down with a knife. Keeps it on there quite nicely. And I have my caps here. Let's go ahead and put this damn thing together, see if it works. I'm getting cold and tired up in this bitch. Yeah! Now I just have to get these contacts close enough together. It hopefully doesn't shock the fuck out of me. If you want to see me light my face on fire, this might be the time. I have one solder connection left. I'm going to put the cap back on and see if I can light a cigarette. Do you know this thing gives off x-ray radiation in a vacuum? 
I think I should wear my aviator glasses for this then. That'll protect me. All right, let me put the lid back on here. We have bent the contacts to where they are almost touching. Oh boy. I do not like that that's not working. <laughs> I had to actually go back in because I forgot to make a gap in the LC circuit. So I have an antenna portion now. This would go to an antenna and this would be our spark. <laughs> that's something else, man. It's working quite well. These things make really cool little project boxes. And I want to put an antenna on this and actually transmit the way they used to for demonstration purposes. Uh, you actually used to transmit Morse code that way. And uh, they actually banned these uh, for widespread use. But uh, I don't think the FCC is going to care if I uh, transmit a little bit of wideband scattered frequency. If I keep it 3 volts. Well, it's scaled up about uh, 10k, but... That's fine. You can do all sorts of things with them, and they do contain batteries for anyone still watching who searched that. Anyways, let's get to the end of the video. You know, in my next video, I'm actually going to turn this into a transmitter. But for now, I have my aviator to protect me from the x-ray radiation, my jean jacket to make me look like I'm running a club from the 70s. It's Johnny Jones. I'm here at home. And I'll see you later. <laughs> Fuck it, it work. Yeah, this fucking thing, uh, it's Johnny Jones over here at home, and I'll see you later. That thing just destroys cigarettes. It just, <coughs> just, it just. I started doing cocaine in my 20s, and that's when all the hippies and the, and the bandmates got around and said, hey, bro, you got a problem. Yes, John Jones will be home and I'll see you later.